Hi, I'm Maria Theohara Solvello Sos on social media. Welcome back to Sober 50 Podcast on Soul Organized Style. Grab a cuppa and relax with us. On Soul Organized Style Podcast, I begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we record this podcast and pay respects to the elders past and present. Thanks for joining us on Sober 50 Podcast on Soul Organized Style. So over 50 intersects with all communities. We're a community that is so over ageism. On today's Over 50 podcast, we have El Yang and Suzanne Okai from Love Binti who are back to talk about Love Binti. On the previous podcast, they told us about the sewing magic program that they run in Uganda. But I know listeners want to know more about what Love Binti is all about. El and Suzanne, thank you for coming back on the podcast. Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much. We're going to have fun with this one. I can tell you that much. (laughs) (laughs) El and Suzanne, we got really good feedback about saying machine magic, but I think people want to know more about what Love Binti is. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. The Love Binti, actually, we have a couple of different kind of models that we are running at the ground. And of course, we begin with sanitary pads. We begin with sewing. That's what our foundation is. However, the longer we develop the project at the ground, we notice more needs that we can meet. So we had developed three models. There are wash models, community empowerment models, and cornerstone models. So wash is where we found after we teach people how to make sanitary pads, then they need some water, they need some hygiene education, they need some hygiene facilities at the villages where it's rural. So it begins to help them with drilling boreholes, collecting the rainwater, or filtering the water sources so that people have safe, clean drinking water. And that is essential for the life to sustain at the ground so that they can thrive after having this basic needs on meat. So after water, we have toilets. Of course, if you have a safe, secure toilet, data shows that the teenage girls at the school, they are able to maintain their hygiene management for menstruation. And also they feel more secure to dispose or change to clean themselves. And that was for community skills and down to the family skills that a proper hygienical toilet will help improve the hygiene in their daily life and reduce a lot of diseases that it's not necessarily around young children and, of course, grown-ups also. So that's our WASH model. Community empowerment actually has the most of our project includes under this model including the sewing machine that everybody heard from the last podcast yeah. because we want to have training courses so that people have skills to make their income, increasing their incomes and have a different abilities to maintain their household. So besides sewing, we also have agriculture trainings and livestock trainings and also business training, definitely. I think we mentioned a couple of the status at the ground that people need some inputs of the knowledge for business management. So these are all included in our courses. And after these courses, like sewing machine magic, we have sewing machines for them to start up their own business, like a capital. So for all the other projects, we have agriculture. So we also have some capital for the farmers to begin with. We provide a good quality seedling. So that reduced the time of faultiness of uh, seeds that they bought from the market. So that improves their yielding and improve the healthy status of the vegetables. For example, they don't need too much of the fertilizer. They do not need to purchase the chemical pesticides yep. that we teach them how to use the organic ways to deal with all these problems while growing the vegetables. And the last one, people always talk about teaching people how to fish, right? And so that they can fish for themselves. But what they didn't say is how to deal with if they have already learned and they already have a lot of fish at their home, what to do. So we create a market 
that the supply chains will help the farmers to sell their product. And the reason why Los Binti is able to do that, because we have a headquarter in the downtown capital, in capital Kampala, which we know quite a lot of supply for hotel, for guest house that they need vegetables or mm-hmm. some meat production so that we can be that last miles transportation for the farmers who is deep down in the villages so that they don't have to worry about how to transport and how to get their product on the market. We are having the corporate project for them to do so. And the last but not least, it's very simple and straightforward, is our cornerstone models. We help to improve people's infrastructure. So it could be schools, classrooms, dormitories, or community centers, even churches, because churches in Uganda serve as community centers most of the time. So with the secure place for kids to study, safe place for kids to learn, we know this education will be improved because all we are talking about is education. These courses, training courses, the school educations are really the most important core project that it can help the future for Uganda in the villages. Thank you so much. That's a lot of work, which is just love binti. You're making sure that the community knows how to be productive how to look after the environment and how to not waste their resources. We actually didn't want to say, oh, we want to build a lot of projects. But since we stay at the village, then we realize actually this are their life. When they woke up, when they open their eyes, the first thing is to fetch the water. The second thing is fetch the firewood to cook in the kitchen And the kitchen has a lot of smoke that is hazardous and dangerous. Then that's why we develop a lot of different projects to help the mama at the ground. Because we know without health, we cannot do any training. And without skills, they cannot do anything productive and have income. So that's why we involved into these small courses that we have. Because we know by little behavior changes and some intervention, their lives are drastically changed. We use the local source of materials by making a little stove. Instantly, the smoke are reduced to not, like only 10% compared to before. It's like, I can't see anything in the kitchen. That was very crazy. And I couldn't even walk in. Susan was laughing at me. There's the first time I'm walking into her mom's kitchen. And she's like, oh, I can't. <laughs> that was something <laughs> memorable for me. I was like coughing. I was, my eyes are watering. That was like, no, these need to be changed. And with simple bricks, mud, that can be fixed. And people have those materials. So that's how we start a project like this. We didn't start like crazy with all the things we talk about. But while Love Binti's people that we stay in the ground, we notice that there's certain things that we have to uh, do and then we are very honored, actually, Mm -hmm. that people are willing to learn with us because we are still learning by doing it. Because sometimes the material are different, people have different culture, the religions are different, so we are all adapted and changed for it. Suzanne, would you like to tell us what it's been like to see Love Binti become part of the community? Thank you very much, Maria. For this opportunity once again, uh, Love Binti is driven by goals and dreams. And we really, really desire to see to it that the standards of living of women and girls are improved. And we really desire to see that the livelihood are improved. And this is what kind of drives us. It's our motivation. We always go back to this and we are like, how can we improve this? How can we change this? And for us at Love Binti, this is our motivation. That's why we have these models. When you look at all these models, they are driven towards improving livelihood and improving the standard of living of the people that we are working with or the communities that we are working with. That is our motivation. Elle talked mainly about the models, but under the models, there are so many things that we do. Like it's really diverse. One of the things we are 
trying to launch onto now is what we call the microfinance. We started it with the with machine loan sewing, but we also have in mind that not all women will do the sewing business. So as we train them, we also look at what other things are they interested in or what businesses have they been doing that we can improve them in. We are doing a pilot on what we call a chicken project. In this chicken project, there is one young lady called Proskovia. Proskovia loves chicken is what I would say. She loves to raise chickens for sale. And she's been struggling over time because she does not have finances. So because we are geared towards improving the standard of living of especially women and girls, we ask ourselves, how do we help Proskovia? So we give Proskovia what we call a micro loan. We give her funds to facilitate her chicken business. That is to have more feeds for her chicken, to have more equipment to help her chicken, vaccines, medicines, and to help her raise her chicken better. And you know what? Within a period of three months, Proskovia is doing so well. It's like we gave her a booster, <laughs> a booster dose or a booster vaccine. Uh, a, a person who used to raise uh, two batches of chicken in a year is now already raising. She's on her fifth batch of chicken right now in a period of four months. Now, this is crazy amazing. And she is able to pay back her loan on time in a very timely note. So these are some of the things that we are doing in the community. And we are thinking, how can we help each of the women? For Proskovia, it could be chicken. For another woman, it could be mushrooms. For another woman, it could be sewing. We are trying to look at all these small but very magical things on how we can help improve the standard of living of the people we are working with in the communities. That sounds like a very impressive pilot with the chickens. Yes, it's actually very impressive. You know, over the years, NGOs have been giving money to people. And when you give money, it does not work out. One year down the road, you go back and you ask the person, how is the project doing? And the project is not there anymore. But we realize that when we look at these people's abilities and support them in relation to what they are already doing or what they love to do, or we give them the training. And then after the training, we start an investment and we are like, okay, this is it. You have trained, you have mastered, you understand the bookkeeping, you understand the economics of this business. Here, get going. You will see the person flourishing. But if you give the person money because they have given you a budget, that has not worked. Over the years, that has not worked. And that is why people remain in absolute poverty for so long. But as long as you realize what they are actually good at and you give them support on that, we do not give money as Love Binti. We give you the skill, we give you the knowledge, and we give you all the support mm -hmm. to make sure that you get going. And we are so impressed with how the women are doing, how Proskovia is doing with her chicken, how other ladies are doing with the sewing businesses. It is amazing. It's very impressive. You're absolutely correct. You've given them the training, you looked at what they want to do, and they've got all the support from Love Binti. Elle, what are the goals for Love Binti for 2022? Our vision to always support women in no matter what fields, like Susan says, it could be agriculture, it could be chicken, it could be sewing. And we are trying to make sure all the courses that we have at the ground are expanding. So that's really important for us for 2022, because as everybody can understand prior to this year, there's so many restrictions of people gathering in the same places. So that's also what we encounter at the ground. And that's also affecting our class so much because of the COVID that we cannot get people together, have the in-depth of the training from our demo farm that we have at the ground. And we are sure at 2022 and 2023, we're going to glow even brighter and we're going to increase even more because we have now 
also welcome more and more volunteers that is willing to travel to Uganda post pandemic. So we are looking forward for so many projects that grow up in very deep because we want not just one per school via story. We want and we want a hundred and we want like Prescovia can be the teacher that become another people's inspiration. Thing like what Susan also very inspiring me at the beginning is she has her own shop for sewing. And then she also have a heart to give up to her community in the slum area. And that's how where we found each other and we kind of click right away because we both have heart for the women at the ground. And we then start to develop all, develop all this project together. And that's where I think if it empower the people at the ground, it can go beyond that you can imagine. Because let's be honest, in the long run, I know Susan will be in Uganda. But let's say in 20 years, I don't think Elle will be in Taiwan or in Uganda. Because for the people who is living there, the local people, yeah. that's where that can be more sustainable. So in 2022, 2023, we are planning to grow more in leadership training for the management team to grow bigger so that they can lead their own projects. The work that you're all doing at the ground level for the local people and to keep it sustainable is more than money could provide. Money's good, but you're doing so much great work in Uganda. You, Elle and Suzanne, you're doing such wonderful work. I'm really pleased that we could do this recording for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Elle, is there anything that people can do to support Love Binti? Oh, thank you for asking. There's so many ways. So first of all, we are really just happy for you to go to our social media. You can go through so many wonderful stories because if you are not have enough with what we are sharing, you will have more on our social media platform. We share a lot of story instantly. So either Instagram or Facebook, you are so welcome to just join lovefinty.intl. And of course, we are still doing a lot of fundraising to support all the projects at the ground. And for now, we are running a fundraising for end period poverty for Uganda women on fundraiser.com. It's all written in English. This is our actually first English fundraising that we ever did. So we are very happy and honored if you guys want to support our work, especially to improve women in menstrual hygiene, because this fundraising is specific for this, but there are more different fundraising for sewing machines, magic coming, and also tailoring center are coming. I'm really happy to share all this info for people who wanted to know more. Thank you so much. I would like to just thank everyone for listening in and for giving us their time and just to make a call to everyone out there to come up on board, possibly work with us or work with any other entity to support women and girls because there is so much potential in someone who is given a hand, who is held. There are some people who have been demotivated by life pressures, but when someone comes up and uh, tells them you are precious you can do it you are strong you are brave there is power in positivity and that is the positivity that the whole world needs so that we can all thrive together wonderful thank you so much suzanne thank you so much l i hope that people will go and have a look at lovebinti.org and help you out thank you thank you very much thank you so much thank you Listeners wasn't the very first So 50 Live led by Bird and Molly Brilliant. On May the 31st, Bird will lead this live chat with Pauline Bruce. Now, Pauline is the co-creator of the hashtag So Hackable Challenge on Instagram. Also, on next week's podcast, you'll hear Lindy of Stocks Pattern in her Encore podcast. So the 50 intersects with all communities. Listeners, remember to direct message So Over 50 on Instagram to be a volunteer guest editor. This episode for So Over 50 podcast on Soul Organized Style was produced by me, Maria Thea Harris, with permission of Elle Yang and Suzanne Okai, soundbybensound.com. You can subscribe to Soul Organized Style podcast, but with an S not a Z on all good podcast apps. Make sure you go back and listen to our free So Over 50 podcast archive and if you can, 
consider supporting the production of this podcast on Patreon. We look forward to joining you in your sewing room next time. Stay safe, everyone.